Well, good evening, everybody. We're just kind of getting started. We'll be starting in a couple minutes. I just want to welcome everybody. I'm actually uh, remote. That's why we had to change from um, our usual Monday to Tuesday. Uh, remote up here in Sundance, Utah, uh, up here with uh, uh, a lot of our leaders and uh, kind of planning to go help the world get healthier. And so very excited to, to talk to you tonight. We'll get going in about four minutes. And uh, if anybody has any uh, comments, yeah, it's great up here. Uh, it's beautiful, not a cloud in the sky. Uh, temperature is uh, just amazing. And, you know, it's really cool. We're going to talk tonight about Element 4. And in that, you know, it's really cool to get out in nature. One of the things we as humans don't do anymore is we don't get out enough. We're not outside. and We're inside. We're on our computers. We're glued in to TV, computers, phones. And we're missing this incredible thing called life. And so uh, I can tell you that uh, yesterday when I was driving up uh, through the uh, Aspen Loop, there's a loop that goes up through the Aspen Groves, uh, and the Aspen trees are in full changing right now, the full color. They're beautiful yellows, the greens turning yellows, and the vibrant sunlight on them. And they, they, they quiver because they only have one stem in the middle, so they don't have a, a, a big structure, and so they quake. Uh, and you can watch them quake and just with the sunlight and it, it's just such a great, great time uh, to really sense, you know, being connected. And so that's kind of tonight. We're going to be spending some time talking about um, your mind and, and how important our mind is. And it's never been more important than it is now. We, you know, we live in a time of uncertainty and, and people are really struggling to find that grounding, you know, that can bring them back and make a sense of it all. Um, and it really comes down to starting to examine your mind. And so again, just, uh, just really appreciate it. And, you know, and I, and I, I teach this and I study it and I help, uh, coaches and leaders and clients and patients, uh, learn more about this. But sometimes, you know, you just get an opportunity to kind of reflect on yourself. And, uh, today, uh, I sat by the stream and watched the water go by and, and just felt this sense of reconnection. And so I think that's so important. You know, the fall's kind of a, a time of reflection anyway, an opportunity for us to kind of take some deep breaths. We'll talk more about that tonight and just connect back to nature and connect back to your family and to a quieter time and, and a calmness and, you know, turning off uh, the, that, that cell phone and really spending some just, just quiet time. It, it can be in prayer. It can be in meditation. It can just be in just looking around at nature, going to the beach. You know, when I was growing up, I was a lifeguard. Uh, and I know people would come to the beach and when they would come, they'd be all hectic. They have their kids and they're trying to get their blanket right. And the kids are running around kicking sand up and it's all chaos. And usually by the end of the day, it was just this mellowness. The same families that were chaotic would then just kind of relax and everybody was quiet and having a great time. And so I think it's really important that we take a sense of that in one way. And we'll talk about this later about how you can breathe. But it's just kind of sense our breathing. If our breathing is chaotic, it's shallow and it's rapid, and it's coming mostly from the upper part rather than deep down in our diaphragm, it probably indicates that you have a lot of stress going on. And so it's great to be able to use the tools we're going to talk about that are uh, available and uh, we discuss in Element 4, also in Part uh, 1.6 of the Habits of uh, Health, the, the book that, that you all use. Uh, it gives you an opportunity to kind of just sense and start to understand yourself. And we're going we're gonna to talk about the different brains we have and how some of them kind of hijack this and like a neural tripwire put us in a position where, you know, we just, we just don't do well and we get stressed out. So 6 o'clock, I'm going to go ahead, or 8 o'clock your time, or wherever you are, maybe it's 5 o'clock if you're in the West Coast, but it's 6 o'clock here, uh, here in Sundance. It's 8 o'clock on the East Coast and 5 o'clock on the West Coast. Uh, so we're going to get started. So element four, basically creating a healthy mind. You know, I, I find this really a fundamental element. And if you spent lots of time in this, and I know our coaches uh, really spend a lot of time with their clients and their, and their patients in this, in this element, because it really all revolves around that. And, you know, what I'm finding more and more is that emotional mismanagement is the le leading cause of disease and, and people not feeling well. It's that we kind of let our mind run rampant on us and take control 
uh, and stress us out. So this uh, element, you know, should take one, it's, we suggest one week to go through, but you know, if it takes longer, that's okay. I'd really ha like you guys to be really grounded in this because it can be so powerful for you. And if you're willing to do that, you know, you can start to become the dominant force in your life. And it's possible. You know, I, I know so many people that have used this technology and used this system and started to really build the self-awareness necessary to make the choices that they really want. So in essence, what ends up happening in life, and, and we're going to talk about uh, becoming the dominant force in your life, is that we've got, we've got to understand how our mind works. And in essence, 10,000 years ago, basically, everything around us could kill us, right? We had saber-toothed tigers that could eat us. We had poisonous snakes that could kill us. We had insects. We had all kinds of ferocious animals beyond saber-toothed tigers. And so we were very aware. And so like I talk about in, in the Habits of Health in the book in the first part, is that it's not your fault. You're actually programmed this way. You're programmed to look for the threats around you because it could have saved your life 10,000 years ago. And if you're here today, probably your descendants were really good at doing it. So I want to make sure it's not your fault. But what's happened is the world has dramatically changed. And almost all the threats we have now actually are perceived threats. They're not real threats. Now, certainly in the pandemic, there are real threats. And we, we need to pay attention to those. But beyond that, watching that TV and sitting there and listening to it all day long, you're sending in this stimulus. And what it does is it just totally supercharges your, your drama triangle, which we're going to talk about, which is basically based on the limbic system of your brain. It's the area that would feel something and you would react. If you saw a snake on a, on a, on a path, you would jump before you even notice what that snake was. Think if we thought about it and saw, oh, look at that beautiful rattlesnake. God, it has all that variegated colors. It's got this thing on the back that's going like this and making that sound. Isn't that special? You'd be dead. So your body was designed, your mind and your senses were, wow, I see it, boom, I'm going to jump and then think about it. But now that's not serving us. And so basically at times like this when we have all these perceived threats, what it's doing is activating and there's one of four mechanisms. We used to run really quick, flight, we would freeze, we would basically faint, or we would fight, you know, and all those things would release all that all that epinephrine and norepinephrine and cortisol would be released, but we would use it and, and, and basically use it up so it didn't harm our body. And it also didn't happen that often during the day. But we know now that we have over 15,000 neurological impulses of perceived threat, just this data coming in so rapidly. And because we're so connected to uh, our IT and our, our, our different uh, devices, our electronic devices, we're on this leash. And so we have this data coming in all the time. And if we don't pay attention, it will take you and put you in this upgraded state where you have the, all those bad chemicals going on. And over time, it wears out our body and it causes all kinds of secondary problems. It can cause cancer, heart disease, diabetes, all these things are related to this stress level. And, and besides that, you just don't feel well. That's why you may not have the energy. You may be exhausted all the time because you have this constant bombardment of threats. Most of them aren't even real. So what we need to do is first understand that when you sense that, you need to know what state am I always in? What is my perception to the world? So in element four, we actually do a little, a little um, quiz. And in the quiz, it kind of finds out what your orientation is. See, most people think the world's happening to them and rather than thinking that they're in control. And as long as you think that, we call that the locus of control. If you think everything's happening to you, you are giving away the power. And then we have this thing called the drama triangle. The dry, tri drama triangle, which is in both the book as well as in the, in the life book in element four, is, is basically a pyramid. People think they're the, uh, they're the victim. So most people, 95% of people think they're a victim. Or they think they're a villain where they're going to blame it on everybody else. Or the third is because they can't stand stress or dysfunction or pain for others or themselves. They are become the hero where they're trying to help other people to take that edge off. None of those things are good. And what we call that is being below the line when you're in survival mode. And when you're in survival mode, it is a very bad state for your body. Now, we all go below the line sometimes. But it's basically understanding, and we're going to talk about how you can catch yourself and then make a different choice. So the way we were designed, we have three brains. 
we first have basically the reptilian brain, right? The, the brain that just responds and it just reacts. It's the one that controls your breathing, it controls your heart, it controls all the basic parameters of your body. And with that, it just simply reacts. It's stimulus response. So, you know, if somebody goes to reach out, you, you put your hand up or you blink. And that's basically a very, 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 very low level brain. The middle brain, which is called the limbic brain or the mammalian brain, or I call it the Labrador brain because I've got two labs or one of them just passed, but I have, I have labs and they're all about the mammalian part of the brain, which is the emotional brain. They're emotional about food. They're emotional about uh, everything that's going on. And you, you, we know they are, and they're, but, but they're obviously loving animals. But that brain responds to everything around it through emotion. So that's the one that if something bad happens, it responds immediately. immediately. The human brain, the thinking brain, is the one in the prefrontal cortex. It's the one up on top. That's the brain that helps you make uh, the disciplines, the good decisions, the executive centers where you can create and think, where you make the right choices, you use logic, and that brain sits at the top. Now, here's the thing. If you're not starting to understand how your body works and sensing through self-awareness, you are really, really likely to operate in the limbic brain. And what happens is, and you can see in the diagrams, in the three brains as they go up, basically your thinking brain never has a chance because that stimulus response is going back to that 10,000 year old design. As soon as you have a perceived threat, someone threatens your ego, someone says something about you or says something that you don't like, basically you immediately respond. And what we do is we either reach out and say something we don't want to say, which later on we regret once we get our thinking brain back in place, or we'll do something stupid, like we'll, we'll be so stressed out, we'll go and eat a hot fudge sundae or eat a bag of M&Ms or, or uh, drink a, you know, a, 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 a keg of beer. I mean, it could be anything, but all those things are a response once we, once we sense that there's a stimulus that we don't like. So. What we want to do is get this part of your mind back together. Now, how do we do that? Well, there's a couple of technologies we use. The first one is understanding that it's self-awareness. In order to self-regulate and make the right choices, there's self-awareness. And self-awareness starts that when your emotional brain starts, it basically emotions are energy. They're actually energy that releases all kinds of things, and when they're released, Ones that, what ends up happening is you do something immediately and your, your thinking brain gets bypassed. So you immediately stimulus response and you respond immediately to what's going on. And that's our normal unconscious response, right? What we want to do is create that self-awareness. Now, how do we do that? Well, your body gives you signals. You know almost every time when you start to have something happen that doesn't feel right, you suddenly don't feel right. You might have a, you know, like this feeling in your throat like tightens up or it may be a pressure in your chest, or it may be this feeling uneasiness in your gut, or it might be just stress in your forehead. All those things are signs, early on signs, that your body is perceiving something is not right, and that's the time to catch it. So I created a mechanism called Stop, Challenge, and Choose. It actually allows you to break that stimulus response. In fact, everything in the world can be improved by understanding if you can stop when a negative stimulus is starting to come up and you can understand what's causing it and then choose what you really want to have happen, what you're learning about in the book, everything can change. It can make all the difference. So when you sense that, you want to stop, take a deep breath, and during that deep breath, kind of challenge, why am I feeling this? And then think, what do I want to do instead? And it takes about anywhere between 60 to 120 seconds, you know, on average about 90 seconds for that emotion to come and then pass through you. So if you stop, challenge, and what I do, like, you know, when I'm sitting in a meeting and, you know, we all get triggered. Listen, we're humans. Remember, we're humans. We're not perfect. We're never going to be perfect. But to beat yourself up or do something that's bonehead that you don't want to do, that doesn't help either. Because if you eat a hot fudge sundae afterwards, not only are you now upset that you got upset about it and it didn't help you, now you've eaten something that's not good for you and then you feel bad and guilty about that. This is all our mind playing tricks on us. So first thing is to be self-aware, to stop. And what I'll do, like if I'm in a meeting, in a corporate meeting, or it doesn't matter where around, and there's something said that I can sense. It's starting to, you know, either I don't think it's correct, 
uh, it's, a, it's perceived like someone just doesn't understand. It doesn't matter what it is. What I'll do is I'll stop and I'll say, okay, I'm starting to feel where I'm losing a little bit of control up here. I don't want my limbic brain taking over. So what I'll do is I like to take my water, take a big drink, take a big uh, breath, and just kind of sigh and let that feeling go. I want you guys to try this because you're going to be amazed. Because all of a sudden you start, and now I've done it so long and it's become a habit of health for me through micro habits, practice, 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 going to the mental gym. You know, we spend so much time going to the physical gym, or I hope you're going to the physical gym. We spend no time in the mental gym. And yet that is more important than our physical as far as physicality of exercise, it's, it, which is important. But getting control of the negative uh, things going on in those reactions is even more important. So, you know, start, even if it's one minute a day, start going to the mental gym. So stop challenge and then I'll, when it's something that's really got me going, I might put my top back on and then take it off and take another drink. So what I'm doing is giving time to move through and let that emotion pass. And as that emotion passes, then this reconnects, and then I can choose and say, okay, in this case, this is what I want to have happen. I want to understand more. I ask an inquisitive question. I ask what happened, what's missing, what's next. I'll, I'll ask something that takes away the drama triangle, going down the drama triangle. Because once you get going in the drama triangle, the other people get in the drama triangle, and it just goes around and around and around, and nothing great gets accomplished because it becomes emotional, not logical. So I hope, I hope that's help, helpful. So, and then I choose. So here's, here's the thing. Last week we talked about element three, which talked to you about basically the habit loop. So just like you build habits in your eating and your movement and your exercise and your sleeping and all those areas, you want to build habits by going to the mental gym. And the habits are the same. Stop. You're stopping because you feel this physical challenge, something going on, that uneasiness. That's your cue. That's the cue. The routine is to challenge. Start challenging. Why am I feeling like this? What am I thinking? And then the reward is to choose something that's healthy or choose something that makes sense. Choose something that builds your relationships versus tears them down. Choose something that can make all the difference basically in making a choice where you go for a walk rather than eat that hot fudge sundae or you basically you know take like i have here i just finished the big meat i have an apple you know and i and i've been i was chewing on the apple because it's a great apple's great because you chew on it it's good for you apple day keeps the doctor away and you chew on it and what ends up happening is just masticating like that chewing kind of gives you time to, is it stress relievers? Because you know, we carry a lot of our stress right here in our ma mandible, right at the TM junction, right? That's why people get TMJ. They get te uh, temporal mandibular uh, basically dysfunction because of that. So what we can do is take the apple, chew on it, and just kind of sense, you'll sense it. You'll sense it going away, okay? And then basically, so that's very helpful. The last thing I want to do is I kind of leave you tonight, and we try to keep these to about 15 minutes, is I want you to start using this. So what would be a great thing is to maybe, maybe over the next day or so, think of something that you can do. Stop, challenge, and choose. Take a deep breath. And by the way, the deep breath is so important because what happens when you become conscious of your breathing, it can, as I talked about earlier, it can be an indicator that you are stressed. You may not even know you're stressed. You're really working on something. And then, but you sense, how's my breathing right now? If you're breathing slow, regular, and your diaphragm. So what I, what I tell people is to kind of sense, is your diaphragm moving or is it really just shallow breathing up here? And what you can do is take a really deep breath. Now, how do you take a deep breath? You put your hand on your chest and your hand on your belly. And when you take that deep breath, you should feel your belly going out, right? Because basically as your diaphragm goes down, your belly has to expand to make room for the lungs getting bigger. So that's a nice way to check that. So anyway, in review, breathing can help. Drinking water can help. It's really the idea of sensing that self-awareness. And so if the next, next before the next week, you know, during this week, while you're working on element four, basically... Think about that. Become self-aware every time you're feeling that feeling. And the other thing you can do, we talk about this later on in the elements, 
uh, when we talk about your thoughts and your emotions. But the other thing is identify what you're feeling. You know, there, there's basically only a, a very few real pure emotions. All of them are derivatives of that. So kind of sense, am I, am I angry? Am I fearful? Am I sad? You know, what, what, what's going on? You know, so that's really, or am I joyful, right? Which is hopefully where we get to spend more and more time. We're not always going to be joyful. And by the way, be, just so you know, being happy all the time, no one's happy all the time. And to try, try to, not try, but to try to, to be happy all the time, basically you're missing. We will have full spectrum of emotions and start to understand those. So uh, it was great being here tonight. You stop, challenge, and choose. Really, you know, spin that, take it out for a spin. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm really, really excited that you guys are with us. We have more and more people. Share this with your friends, your family. Uh, so many people are struggling, especially in this area right now. So s send it out to them. Share it with them. Uh, and let's go out and make the world a healthier place. Thank you, guys. Good night.